Hi folks, in this episode I'm going to describe uh, coalitional games. Uh, before I start, I would like to uh, uh, distinguish two uh, coalitional games. Uh, this distinction is very important. Um, uh, we are going to call some games as games with transferable utility and others games with non-transferable utility. Uh, if it is a transferable utility game, we denote it by TU, otherwise we denote it NTU. So uh, in this chapter, uh, we are going to talk about transferable utility games, uh, but they're also uh, coalitional games or cooperative approach uh, with uh, non-transferable uh, utility. Uh, for example, matching is one of them, and we're going to talk about those, but in the future, not in this chapter. Well, what is the difference? Uh, the key difference is the following. The transferable utility games are those games where uh, players can transfer utility among themselves perfectly. Or uh, put it this way, they are getting some benefit as a group and they can distribute this benefit among themselves uh, perfectly. How is this possible? Well, it could be a commodity that is perfectly divisible or maybe there's some other commodity like price and so or money so they can transfer money among themselves and so uh, you see what I mean? They, they transfer utility uh, between uh, among one another. In the non-transferable utility games, however, um, probably the, the group uh, or the coalition uh, doesn't get uh, so a perfectly divisible uh, good and, and, and or money is not available and so uh, they cannot uh, transfer utility between uh, uh, sort of uh, among, among the uh, members of the coalition. You, all right so the ice cream example is a perfect example where uh, which fits the transferability. In fact all three examples I talked about at the first episode are all of them are transferable utility uh, because of, in the ice cream example uh, if all three gets together and buy 1000 gram of ice cream they can split this uh, you know uh, in any way they like because uh, ice cream we assume is perfectly divisible all right but if it is a car that they are buying well clearly they can't uh, sort of partition the car, they can't divide it. Obviously they can divide you know the number of days or hours uh, they would like to, uh, I mean they are going to uh, sort of own the car. Uh, so in that case we can make the game uh, with a transferable utility but I hope you understand what I mean uh, that there is some sort of way of dividing the uh, payoff outcome among players. If this is the case, it's called transferable utility game. Well, in any games, uh, in, the, in the coalitional games, we have to start with set of players denoted by n. I assume that small n is the number of players we have. Uh, different than the non-cooperative approach, we are going to talk a lot about coalitions. Coalitions are basically some subset of the set of players, all right? It could be empty, it could be only one individual, it could be two, maybe all of them. If all individuals are in the coalition, well, the set of players itself, we call it grand coalition. Uh, this terminology is important because we're going to use it a lot, all right? But if it is, uh, if, it in, if it excludes some members, uh, we're going to denote them C or D or F, some capital letter, all right? But it is called a called coalition set of players. Well, then we have a function. Uh, this function is going to map every subset of set of players. So 2 to the power n is basically all subsets of n. Uh, the set of players, including the empty set, obviously. So it, it maps all subsets of set of players into some real number, all right? Uh, we call this V as the characteristic function. Some of, sometimes, uh, you know, some pay, uh, books uh, call it worth function or value function. I think I'm going to go back and forth between characteristic function and worth function. Um, so for any coalition, which is a subset of set of players, V of C basically indicates the value 
that the members of this coalition C can get from this strategic environment, this game. All right. So uh, we denote a game with these uh, this pair and and V. So here's the formal definition: a transferable utility coalitional game is a pair G denoted by G. Uh, so it includes the set of players and and the uh, worth function where n is the set of players and v is the characteristic function. Um, that's it. So if we go back to the ice cream example, remember there were three kids A, B, C, six dollars, four dollars, and three dollars, and so there were ice cream seven dollars, the small one, medium one uh, was nine dollars, and the large one was. Uh, $11. And so what would be the worth function in this game? Well, uh, this is sort of a normalization, all right? If there's no one in the coalition, that means no player is chipping in. And so no one can buy an ice cream, kind of think it that way, all right? I mean, the empty set is the empty coalition. There's really no one. So it's just a, a matter of normalization. So we denote V of empty set zero in all our games. So in this game, V of A, V of B, and V of C, meaning if player A is the only person, all right, so he doesn't uh, sort of uh, coordinate or, or sort of uh, pool his money with anybody else. Uh, so this is A alone, B alone, C alone. Remember, they don't have enough money to buy even the smallest tub of ice cream. And so they each receive zero ice cream. Um, however, if A and B pool their resources, uh, remember, they can buy the medium size ice cream, which means 750 gram. Same for A and C. And however, if B and C pool together, their, their uh, uh, monies were lower than A. And so they can only buy the uh, small tub of ice cream. So therefore, their valuation is, not valuation, I'm sorry, their worth is 500, all right? Um, and if you remember, if they all three get together and pool their resources, they can now afford uh, the biggest size, 1,000 gram of ice cream. And so V is basically how much ice cream they're going to get. So here, I know these val value functions or the worth functions are just mapping each coalition into how much ice cream they get. But for simplicity, you can assume that this is exactly what these players care. All right. So the more ice cream they get, the happier they're going to get. Um, so, well, are they risk averse? Um, all right. Well, it, it, these are perfectly valid questions. But for simplicity, we assume that all those numbers, uh, these guys, uh, these players are von Neumann Morgenstern utility maximizers. And so these are von Neumann Morgenstern numbers. So that means 1000 gram of ice cream means 1000 units of utility for these guys. All right. So that's just a simplification assumption. Obviously, if you want to make these guys risk averse, risk loving, whatever, uh, well, then uh, you can incorporate all this into the game structure. But we don't really want to deal with all this uh, sort of um, extras at this point. Uh, but yeah, exactly. This is how we sort of formally describe uh, the ice cream game and V. So V is as described here and N is the set of players A, B and C. All right. And sometimes we denote the set of players as one, two, three. Here it makes more sense to denote it by A, B, C. So uh, let's be flexible about it. All right. So before I conclude this episode, I would like to underline one important thing that we will actually never talk about it specifically and explicitly. Um, but I just wanted to sort of underline this assumption nevertheless. So um, we are going to assume throughout this chapter that uh, there's going to be no payoff externalities between the coalitions, meaning um, each uh, coalition's payoff or what they get at the end of the game uh, depends only on what happens in in that coalition. All right. Uh, so my payoff when I'm in a coalition, uh, for example, if I'm player A and if I'm in coalition AB and the other guy uh, C is, is sort of alone, uh, well, what he does is not going to uh, affect my uh, payoff, all right?